everyone watching this video. This is a video about how to study Gypsy Jazz efficiently because I've been playing now for maybe some four years and it took me ages to find a way to study efficiently. And I think I finally found it. So I wanted to make this video to share with you my thoughts on practicing efficiently. I might be totally wrong and please tell me, I might help you and then it would be great if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel. But um, yeah, these are my thoughts. Let's get into it. First of all, I am not a professional gypsy jazz player. I'm not a, even a really good gypsy jazz player. I'm just a guy really loving the music. I started playing it in back in 2012-ish. Um, studied really hard for one year and then I quit because it was too complicated. Uh, it was too, yeah, it was a gypsy jazz mountain and I was just looking up and I was like totally overwhelmed by it. And I quit, quit for eight years, didn't touch the guitar. Uh, and then Corona happened, the pandemic happened, and then I, I picked up the guitar again. I ordered this one by, uh, at Cyril Gaffiero in France. Uh, it's a really, it's an amazing guitar. And um, it was lost though in the mill for six months. And I was six months without a guitar. And it's so end of 2020, end of 2020, I started playing gypsy jazz again. And this was my level. <laughs> Now it's three years later, it's 2024 now. And in the meantime, I've been to many workshops. I followed many, many online courses with Jakob Hotter, with Sebastian Dorot, with Clément Reboul. Uh, I went to see, I went to live workshops with Robin Nolan, with Paulus Schaefer, with Fapi Lafertin, with Tim Kliphuis, with Stochel Rosenberg even, with Gizmo Graf and other really famous guitar players and Christian van Hamer. Um, who taught me a great deal and still the first two years were very very confusing and now after two three years it starts to dawn how should I practice how should I practice efficiently how should I practice the tunes um, and so I think I thought let's make a video about it so let's go <laughs> Lesson one, tune your guitar, tune your guitar. It might sound super obvious, but I've been doing it wrong for a lot of time. Showing up at a jam, taking my guitar, being all nervous and then starting playing and then people next to me like, is your guitar in tune? And I'm like, oh no. So get a tuner, get a tuner like this, you know, you can just clip on and so be in tune. It's, it's, it's really, it's a big rookie mistake. Other rookie mistakes I was told I was making. So first is the flat hand picking. A lot of people have this still from there when they used to play uh, electric guitar or other styles of guitar, you're used to playing uh, flat with your, with your wrist flat on the guitar and alternate picking. So this is really hard uh, uh, to let go of. It's, it's really a technique you need, if you want to play the style, you really need to learn the new technique and the best way to do that i think is to forget about the old technique but maybe you want to play two different styles but it's highly recommended to work really hard on your right hand i think the a lot of the gypsy jazz playing is um very virtuosic in the left hand and and this, this is really the hand that does the flashy stuff you know that really looks impressive but 
a lot of tone production and a lot of the subtleties that come from uh, the right hand should not be neglected. They, in French, they call the right hand la plume, which means the feather. It's, it's, it's a really, it, it looks like it's doing a lot of hard work, but it's really very, very, very subtle. And it's now after three years that I really incorporated right hand practice into my practice. Like I really focusing on my right hand. Is it relaxed enough? Is there not too much tension? Am I in the right spot? Because what I used to play, and what I see a lot of people still doing, is they play more like this, or they play like this, and I still do it. I still do it. They play. The best way to play for sound production, you can go back. The best spot for the best sound is just behind the hole, just behind the rosas, in the straight line. And I learned from Christian von Hamer that you sh a good way is to put your biceps on this part of the guitar. This way your arm can never go too much in front. But still, I, 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 I see myself, I record myself and I see myself or I see recordings or pictures and I see myself playing here. But you should really be playing here. You can play here. Or here. But it has a different sound. And so the best, most neutral is here. I used to play a little bit of heavy metal when I was a kid. A few uh, campfire uh, light things. But the technique, Gypsy Chess technique, is really, really, really different. Django used to be a banjo player, and the whole idea of playing Gypsy Chess is that it's loud. You need your instrument to project to a maximum. That's why they have the red, really distinct picking. See my right hand. So this is a really important thing to work on. I would put a link in the description to what I think is the best resource for rest stroke picking. The other part is tapping the rhythm with your right leg. And your guitar goes up and down, up and down. So sit straight, put your guitar a little bit inclined so you can see well. And when you tap the rhythm, tap it with your left foot. The second thing that's really important about gypsy jazz, really different is the chords, where a lot of us play bar chords like this. Uh, if you get to know gypsy jazz, then you probably know about Django, the godfather of gypsy jazz, being in a fire when he was 18 and having his hand burned and only being able to use a few of his fingers, three, and a bit of this on his uh, left hand. So Django couldn't really do this chord. He could a bit, but that's why the way the chords are fingered are different in this jazz. So like this. You really have to learn this. Uh, way of, of, of using the chords. And if you want to learn great stuff about this, you can go to the Dennis Chang Music School, the DC Music School. So a little disclaimer, I will not disclose any information that I paid for with other uh, teachers. That wouldn't be fair. I mean, people work very hard and uh, need to be able to make a living from what they're doing. But I want to maybe share a few tips and tricks on where to get the right information or where to get stuff that I think is very um, helpful. So first of all, when you take a song, you need to break it down. Okay, what is a gypsy jazz song? What does it consist of? So normally that would be an intro and then the, uh, the song starts and you have the head or the melody. The melody normally lasts the whole form, the form is the chord progression that's underneath it. So there's a chord progression. So 
For example, with minor swing, it would be A minor, D minor, E7, A minor, D minor, A minor, and then I turn around. So this less one form, and well, minor swing is not a really good example because it has not really has a melody, but normally when a song has a melody, it lasts as long as the form of the song. After the melody is played, we go to the choruses. This is where uh, the people playing uh, solo, taking a solo, improvising, get the, the, the chord progression starts from the top and solo players can play over it. And then you, after you do one chorus or you do two choruses, you're not at somebody playing with you and you say, okay, I'm done playing now. You want to play? Yeah. And then you go on uh, until you give each other a sign. Okay, so we stop and then we, you go back to the melody. And then there's an, sometimes there, it, the song just ends or there's an outro. But this all seems very obvious, but it wasn't really obvious to me. So when now, when I start to learn a tune, a lot of teachers told me this. First thing to do is to listen. First, you listen to recordings. Best by the greats, by Django, by Birelli, by Stochel Rosenberg. But also, a lot of the songs, like All of Me, Autumn Leaves, the, um, It Don't Mean a Thing, If It Ain't Got That Swing, uh, all, those, all these songs come from the Great American Songbook. So those songs are, are, are jazz standards you can find uh, sang by Ella Fitzgerald or Frank Sinatra. And the best way, a lot of people told me, the best way is to listen to recordings by Frank Sinatra because he sings the song like they're supposed to be sang. So he stays really true to the original. It, this helps you get in touch with the melody. For example, if you take All of Me, we say All of Me. Why not take All of Me? Can't you see? I'm not good without you. So you hear that's the melody. So if you get the melody in your head, the song in your head, and you get the words in your head, then it's easier to play the melody. And the great thing also, one of my biggest epiphanies was that you don't have to play the melody like Stocholo or like Birelli right from the start. You can just take the bare, bare minimum, you know, like you can, there's, if we take all of me again and we listen to Stocholo or Adrien Moignard. Simplify, you know, just take. And just go along and build on top of this. So this is a lesson Fapi Lafertem told me, just start with the melody. Just first learn the chords, first learn the chords, first learn the harmony. So. And then start with the melody and start with a really simple one. And then you can add stuff all the time. play with the rhythm you can play we can embellish it it's called embellishments you know making it i cannot do it yet but maybe in time and then you can just so you can start really simple then a really important part of um, gypsy jazz is the swing the swing i didn't know about this i didn't know i didn't even know the c major scale so first i 
learn the C major scale. But if I play it like this, this is really straight. So this is called straight. nothing wrong but it's not swing feel the swing feel is a little bit you put it a little bit off so that's the one that's the bounce in gypsy jazz it's a swing that's this 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 uh, this bounce that makes you want to dance it goes like as opposed to And one of the biggest mistakes I made, and I made, and I keep making still, is, you know, you can like, learn really complicated songs and just, you know, just fiddle your way around it. What I see still happening, a lot of people learn a song, but they, there's parts that's too hard. So they go and they, they, they mess it up a little and they, they, they lose track of the timing. And, well, one thing, a really great thing I learned from Christian van Hemert um, uh, and his van Hemert system is that one of the most important things in, in swing music is the swinging eight feel. It really doesn't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Protecting the swing, protecting the groove is the most important thing to do. You can play really, really easygoing music Really, you don't have to be a shredder to make really good gypsy jazz music. You can be a shredder and have really poor timing and it will sound really bad. And you can be someone who's playing just a few notes on a really simple tune. And if it swings, it swings. So I think if I could play, I will play now. I will, I will put on a metronome here. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I have to go improvising. How do I go about it? Mm -hmm. And then I came across Jakob Hotel. Jakob is a guitarist, a teacher, uh, gypsyandjazz.com. I, I will put it in the description. And he has a really good course on learning to improvise with triads. And triads are the three tones that make up a chord. Uh, if this this used to be very complicated for me, but uh, Jakob Hotel explained it really well in his course about triads, the magic of triads. You should really check that out. What he teaches us is that you can break chords down to only three notes, being the basic notes of a of a chord. And uh, if you take those, and you, for instance, take minor swing which starts with an A minor chord. And if you just take the few, the basic notes, you get this shape or this shape for D minor, or this shape for E7, for E. And if you listen carefully, you can already hear it. Swing. You recognize minor swing in there. So you start with these notes. So on A minor it would be. On D minor it would be. On E it would be. And A back to A minor. Back to D minor. Back to A minor. And back and, and so and so on to the end of the song. So if we take these simple notes, this only this in this part of the neck, only these few simple notes, and we we're gonna play, try to play on minor swing. I just put on a metronome. One, two, three, four. And we can listen to it.
new hair, you can already, only with these few notes and just playing around with them a bit and listening to the swing feel and and trying to 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 follow the chord changes. So go from A minor to D minor and go from D minor to E7. But you can do it on the one beat, so the first beat. So if it starts with A minor, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, goes to D minor, one, two, three, four. You can do it really on that spot on the one, but you can also do it a little bit in front or a little bit in the back. I will not go into this because it will be too complicated for this video, but if you want to find somebody who can give you really good advice about how to do this, then go to Christian van Hamert, buy his books, the Christian van Hamert system. You need to learn skills. You need to learn triads. You need to be able to see, to know if you're in A minor, where the A minor notes are on your fingerboard. So you really need to learn, know this. Um, and what you need to learn is vocabulary. And um, what we see a lot of people do, and I, what I did also, and I, I learn a few skills and I learn a few arpeggios, learn a few triads, and then I go and I do whatever. And I just do, and it's okay because, you know, I, 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 do, I do stuff, you know, I just, uh, I, A minor, I do A minor stuff. <laughs> But gypsy jazz and music in all is a language and it's a language spoken in a style. And um, if you listen to Django, he has a lot of phrases he repeats on different songs. Again, Christian van Hamert has a really good system to teaching licks and how to work with them and how to combine them because that's a really complicated thing. You can learn one lick, but then where do you place it in the song? When does it come? Uh, how would it fit in with the rest? Uh, Christian van Hamert has a lot of uh, good stuff about this. Um, I have a slight different taste in what I think are nice phrases. So um, I like to use the Remy Harris hundred Licks book, Remy Harris, a fantastic guitarist from England, from the UK. And I really like his book. And I just go and take licks here and there. And I transcribe what I transcribe. I just go on YouTube and I go and see some recording I like. And then I put it on low speed. And then I try to figure out what they're doing. And then I just pick one lick or two licks. And then I try to figure it out. And then I try to transpose it in different keys. And then I try to combine it with other licks I've learned so that it becomes natural in a way. And that's also another mistake we see I made and I see people making is they have 20 licks they want to learn in one week. But that's too much. You will forget everything. So just take one lick, learn to use it on different spots in different songs until it's, you kind of, I always like to say, don't practice until you get it right, but practice until you cannot do it wrong. So if you take a lick, for instance, Really beautiful lick by Christian van Hamer. Well, this is now in G. Well, if I want to make it in F, I go, this is the G. This is G, so it's a tonic. So where's the F? It's here, okay? So if F is here, and this is the lick here. In F, it would be. If I want to play it in E, I will play it there. And so, and, and then you can, of course, you can always play because this might sound good on one tune, but on the other tune has a slight different feel, so you make it. Or you make it.
you can just play around and that's when it got, starts to get interesting and then you mix all this stuff together and you practice combining all these different phrases and then you start to have a language so the last important thing I wanted to talk about is the jam because one thing I've learned from um, uh, I think it was Nusha Rosenberg, he didn't tell it to me, but I was told it by a friend, Irene Ippenberg, told me that Nusha Rosenberg, the, the uh, rhythm guitarist of the Rosenberg Trio says, All, always learn one song at a time. Just go with one song, learn it from beginning to end. And then what you learn in this song, you can bring it to the next. But what in my mind happened was like, yeah, okay, I can spend a year on one song, just getting it right. And then I go to a jam and people play like 20 songs in an hour or in, in two hours, they play 20 songs. How will I, I will get lost? How will I do this? How do I do this? And it's still a problem. But then again, just pick five songs you really, you really like and you really like to play and try to find somebody to play with uh, or to jam with and just say, okay, let's work on these five, maybe 10 songs. And so you always can focus on these songs and you can think, okay, we have a minor tune, we have a major tune, we have a tune in rhythm changes, we have a, a bossa rhythm, you have different rhythms, you put a little set list together and then you work on this stuff. And when you learn this stuff really well, then it will expand gradually. Gradually you will be able to add songs and you will learn from everything you already have. One thing to pay attention to also in the jam is to not to play too loud. Um, what happened to me is when I started out, I was very enthusiastic and I was really proud to know the chord progression. So I was like, you know, uh, really eager to let everybody hear that I know the chord progression to minor swing. And then uh, I was playing so loud that the solo player couldn't hear himself. So try always to listen what's happening around you and try to adapt your volume. As a rhythm player, you're the one supporting the solo player. So you, it's not about you, it's about the solo player. So listen, always listen, keep in touch with the people around you. Another thing that happens when you're in a jam is you're at home and you practice everything. You practice your, your intros, your soloing, your uh, chord progressions and at home you know this, and then when you start playing, all of a sudden you know this. Uh, you get nervous. So it's really important in a live situation to be, to know enough to be able to play what you want to play. So you will know this at home, but when you will get nervous, it will shrink down dramatically. Another great tip is to play Django solos. And um, in my experience from last last two years, the best way or very good way to do this is to um, look for Sébastien Dorot from Guitar Exploration and his Django Licks Academy. He um, transcribed a lot of um, Django solos and in his uh, curriculum you can uh, learn those uh, courses and this is the best way to learn Django's language. I mean, I, I paint as well and the, the, every artist starts by copying other artists. That's the way that you learn to understand the language. You learn to understand what others did. So you can, um, so you can build on that. When you learn to speak a language, you start by speaking your parents' language. You, you start by copying your parents. So every learning a new language always starts by copying and who best to copy than Django himself, right? So great tip, learn Django choruses, but don't only learn Django choruses. Also watch your timing. Also look at your right hand. Also look at your chord progressions. Also look at your, also learn your two five ones by heart. So in the end, so to conclude, Listen, 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 listen to Django recordings, listen to Pirelli Lagren, listen to Stochel Rosenberg and the Rosenberg Trio, listen to Paolo Schaefer, listen to Robin Nolan, listen to all the great, great, great guys uh, out there. 
and listen to the original song. So if you have all of me, listen to Ella Fitzgerald, to Frank Sinatra singing it. If you have songs uh, and they're all the great jazz singers singing those great tunes and listen and get the melody in your head and then try to play the melody, try to play the really basic melody, really, and just play around it until it gets second nature, until you start to hear it in the chord progression. This is also a mistake, or, or a mistake, I don't know if it's a mistake, but what I see happening a lot is that people know how to improvise, but they don't know the tune. They, we play a tune and then at the end of the tune, set, people say, oh, that's nice, what tune was that? And they know it's in A minor, so they play A minor over the whole tune, but they don't take care of the chord change. Sometimes there's really crazy stuff harmonically happening, but they don't know the song, so they don't. They just play A minor over the whole thing. They don't really mind. And that's too bad. It's too bad. It's not the way to, I mean, you need, if you want to play the song, then you have to know the song and you have to know to, to, to get into it. So the best way to do so is by learning the melody first. By, um, and then after you know the melody, you can end the harmony, so the chord progression underneath it, when you know this very well, then it's a good time to go on to improvisation. But if you improvise, then look, you have to know what to play at what moment. So you can really make the chord changes come out. You can really uh, accentuate the harmony by playing the right tone notes over the right chord or the wrong notes, but, it, but if you know, but you need to know the rules in order to break them, right? So that's really important. And then what the most, most important thing, get your timing right. And that's, that is where Christian van Hemert comes in. Get your timing right. That's really, really important. So get your alternate pick, get your left hand, get the chords right, get your right hand right for rest stroke picking. Get your timing right. Learn the melodies. Learn your beginnings. Learn your intros. Learn your outros. Really spend a lot of time on learning the melodies. Learning the melodies is really important. And don't forget to swing. Swing. Work on your swing. Work on your swing. Those are the most important things. Then if it comes to improvising, you need to learn skills. You need to learn triads. You need to be able to see, to know if you're in A minor, where the A minor notes are on your fingerboard. So you really need to learn, know this. The best practice routine for me would be one, be in tune. Two, use a metronome. Use a metronome, use a metronome. Timing is everything. Study your arpeggios, study your skills, study your triads, but also study your licks. Study how to uh, recognize licks, how to place them, how to combine them in one tune. If you learn a lick in, in A, let's say A, and you play it on Hungaria, and then you go and transcribe it to F, and you play it somewhere on all of me. And if you want to learn how to do this, check out Christian van Hamer. If you want to learn nice licks, check out Remy Harris. Practice your chords, practice your chord playing. If you want to learn about chords, go to Swing Nuremberg. If you really want a good experience with this, you can go to workshops like with Paulo Schaefer. He gives a really fantastic workshop and you learn to play on stage after a week, after five days of playing, you're, you're already on stage playing for, for a live audience. It's really fantastic and it's really the best way. I mean, this music is made to be played together. And so in the end, there's a tons of workshops around by Robin Nolan, by Gizmo Graf, by uh, Stochelo Rosenberg, by Moses Rosenberg, by Jakob Hotter, by uh, all those, uh, Filippo Dal Asta. Go to those workshops and play together with, with like-minded people. That's the best way. And go to Samoa <laughs> once a year. You have to. And in the end, a good friend of mine, Thomas Bachermann, who was my first teacher in the style, taught me to always have fun while playing. And I really think that is a really, really good piece of advice. 
Um, so yeah, if you're still here, thank you for watching. I hope it helps. Uh, it, this is my first video. I don't know if I'm gonna make any more, but this, yeah, it was a nice try out. Uh, thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and maybe see you in another one. Bye. <laughs>